Hello? So, uh, great. All right, so uh, we're going to be starting now. I'm going to be speaking about um, Eric Bachard couldn't come here. He is originally scheduled for this presentation. Uh, my name is Alexandro Colorado. Um, basically, I'm going to be talking about the education project, which is a project that we have been working um, jointly and is, I think, one of the biggest uh, projects that are happening uh, in the last years because it's not the typical education project that happens in the open source community. Right. So um, this presentation originally was written up by Eric Bachard. So um, I hope that I can do as good as a job as he did. All right. So here's an introduction to the education project. Um, we're going to go through the goals, um, describing how is the education project established, uh, the limits of the open office project, the objectives, and eventually um, the organization that is behind this project. So it really is cool talking and actually being in this venue is, is actually very dramatic. Uh, well, so the education project basically is a new project. Is um, um, like many other open office projects that are new. Uh, we call that an incub incubator project. So it's like a sandbox or or a space in town where the project is is nurtured and being developed. So most of the things that we're doing right now might change a lot in the few uh, months or, or maybe years from now. But uh, at this time, the, uh, the education project is, well, it's an international, pro already got an international status. We have organizations from different parts of the world contributing and collaborating on the development of, of education of the open office uh, or community. So the goals are basically um, trying to get a bridge between the educational world and open office work. Um, many people, when they hear education, they think academic, schools, universities, and so on. And even though part of this is true with the education project, our main target is to create and generate knowledge on using and developing for open office. So just, not just learning the tool, but also the inner works of the tool. Um, three main objectives have come up currently in the education project. Uh, the first one is to create a network of teachers using open office org. We want to be kind of like a global repository for the materials for open office org and also being able to bridge this material throughout the network. We also want to provide a space for exchanging pedagog pedagogical content under the free file format. Um, this is actually very similar to the first one, except that in the first one we take the human aspect of the network, which is the teachers. The second one we take the actual uh, utilities such as content um, and examinations and so forth. And the third one, which is the one that I was mentioning uh, earlier, is to provide a young core developers to write code for open office. So the first goal or the first objective in a more thorough way is um, to create a teacher network that means um, notion of academical correspondence of all levels, whenever it's university, uh, secondary school, or primary school, um, to stay in touch with each other and be able to support each other. So in open source or free software communities, we have this thing called, well, 
is users teach users. Um, and it is pretty much the way the open, the open source community behaves. Linux user groups, for example, are exactly that. Are users teaching other users on how to best use the application. We want to do the same, and we have a space in, on the wiki for that, which is the one written right here. The second objective is um, to provide a sharing area. So the current structure in open office is lack the flexibility for us to to provide that um, the the technology or the or the medium to do this uh, sharing of ideas. So what we did is we actually went outside of the open office traditional uh, infrastructure and create a different entity called Educo. Educo is, um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit later about it, but basically it's an organization that provides the infrastructure for, well, the adaptive tools to do this. And it, by the way, is make a change and accept takes too much energy and time and put files from one source and move it to the rest and be able to provide a web repository of this, of this uh, content. Um, the third objective is, well, is trying to get different parts like the theory or the teachers, the professional developers, and join them together in an exchange of ideas so we can start to provide a developer community, doesn't matter if it's really coming from a specific NLC or a specific regional area. We want to get them in touch with developers and we want to foster an environment of, of teaching these, um, well not kids because some, it doesn't really has to do with, 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 with young students, it could be older people that wants to get a clue on participating into the community. Although, um, for the most part, I must say that most of the, the people that have got into the education uh, project has been uh, university students. And we want to get all these parts and get it into an IRC room and basically um, motivate them to participate in the project throughout a program called efforts. The efforts are specific developing tasks which um, either the student can take and take it throughout the semester and be able to achieve that in a similar fashion as Google Summer of Code, for example. Um, so, um, what is EDUCO? EDUCO is an organization which basically was formed um, as a way of a resource to be in the backing up of the Open Office Education Project. The website is noted right here and it's basically a nonprofit association. Uh, EDUCO provides its own website under www.educo.org and also has blogs and other tools that the current infrastructure in the page of OpenOffice doesn't provide. This allows us to communicate with general people outside of the project and is able to learn what we're doing and also uh, participate into what we're doing. Um, also, we have a, an initiative from Educo called Campus Libre. Campus Libre basically means a free campus that provides this repository of, of, of tools. Um, and, all, and also we have a mailing list for teachers that wants to participate in this program. A little bit more about Campus Libre. Um, it's already 120, uh, 120 users. It's less than a year old. All these things is new, are new. Uh, the contribution concerns now more than 12 courses and um, 
lot of documents waiting for validation. So basically, we already have a repository. We're doing QA on it. We're trying to validate this, and we're trying to get teachers involved into this process so they can say if the content, current content is is sufficient or does it need more work or if it has any venue to be improved. The other future actions for the Campus Libre is basically provide um, documents, mutualizations, which actually is a tough word. Um, what that means basically is we're trying to uh, see if there are ways that the documents can have a mutual benefit. So, for example, the document that was serving good for one class can have the elements to be translated into a different class. So it's basically like a cooperative uh, way of looking at document creation. Um, one thing that we're actually doing a lot is outreaching to other organizations, educational organizations, or educations that are focused in education or or spreading out education or basically innovating within education through IT. Um, so these are some of the of the organizations. Some are universities. Some some are just nonprofits. Um, that are doing research in education using IT or leveraging on open office benefits to provide and we're exchanging ideas with them. So for example, one thing that we have is uh, online courses through something that we call classrooms. Classrooms, as I said before, are RC, uh, does anybody know what RC is, by the way? Or if you want, to raise your hand if you don't know what is RC. Okay, RC are basically chat rooms and um, chat rooms that either the developers from the education project come and also the school, either the, the, the teachers of the classroom or or um, students come and they have a discussion. They have basically like speeches, like this presentation is just text-based. So projects with engineers, usually they attend and, and give a talk on these classrooms and the school contributes. So like I said, they're, they're done online and RSC is usually the fastest way of communicating is not visual, it's only text, but for our purposes, uh, it's, it's pretty good, it's enough. We also have um, a website where we list the, the classroom timeline, if there are upcoming classrooms, by whom, their, their email, the notes after the, the, the talk that the, he gave and also an archive to see uh, the earlier talks. So the other vein that we're working on or the other venue that we're working on is on the efforts. Efforts, like I said before, is, is very similar to the Google Summer of Code project where open source communities uh, put efforts or tasks um, for students to tackle and, and grab it and try to, to, to fulfill it. Um, we're working directly with universities that are interested into growing the, the knowledge within the university about open source and the methodology of working within an open source environment. And they're teaching students how, well, how to manage themselves within mailing lists, through blogs, through um, forums, and IRC, of course. Uh, that brings the whole model of how a collaborative development works in open source and how can they adopt those practices within their uh, university um, project. So 
So some schools already took on the project. And these are some. There's the Epitech from Paris. The Ecole Centrale de Nantes. I know I butchered the language right now. But uh, uh, that's another school that is currently um, working with us. Uh, UTBM. They're mostly in France. Uh, Eric Bouchard is, is native of it, of the area, so maybe uh, that's why uh, he got the chance to go there and convince them about the project. However, the first one was uh, in Toronto, Canada, and it's the, the very first one that we have more experience with, and we already have some results coming from there. So, these are some success stories. Uh, Old, Old Quintana, Quintana and Olivier Girardo from the Ecole Centrale, they implement an eraser feature for tablet PCs in Impress. And the status is still ongoing work. There's code review in progress. One of the developers who contribute from our side is uh, Thorsten uh, Behren, who I think is around here somewhere. Um, and he's also managed by Morgan Martin from the Ecole Central of Nantes. That would be his teacher um, of the developer. So as you can see, well, I was in the earlier talk and I saw that most of the, of the people that build um, this uh, research and development um, plant in, in this town, I forgot the name of the town already, they, they, they say something very interesting. Uh, they said about, well, only through free software we really can innovate. Um, this is actually a channel where we practice that. People that want to innovate that don't have a clue yet about the technology, yes, they have download open office, but they really want to learn the internals and how they can start tweaking it to their to their needs. Um, this will be a very good place to start because you take in account the experience of developers and also the youth and uh, and the timing of what a university student is in, in that period of his life. Um, which usually is, gets complicated after they graduate. Um, this is another example. This is Frederick Gellot and Pierre John Parrot, also from the Ecole de Centrale. And what they do is annotations on the, also on the tablet PC and in press. So they're able to do uh, some special uh, note, uh, noting, note take, taking uh, features. Uh, winning in press, and also also from the same classroom as the, the last one. And this is the third. I guess that the most important part is that you can find a list of, the, of, of URLs. In that URL, you can find a list of all the projects, all the efforts that we have. I don't know how many we have, but we have around, I will say, more than more than 50. So um, I, we already have some results. I mean, for a project that is just one year old, we probably have provided a whole lot of code, um, probably more code than more, uh, many NLCs have provided uh, in all the, their 10 year history, almost 10 year history. So the conclusion, basically the creation of reliable relationships with engineers, schools from everywhere uh, that works well. And this project does only need your help. We also need, uh, need more developers from our side. Um, and we need sponsors that can take this project into a next level. Like I said at the very, very beginning, this is an incubator project. This is a very brand new project and um, it has had some results already, uh, but we also need um, sponsors, we need funding, and we need uh, support from both sides, the open office or community and the general public uh, population 
uh, and especially if you work for school or if you're a student, uh, this could be a good project to introduce into your, your organization. What is the, the roadmap basically for the future? We want to teach open source. Uh, we want to grow the proposal, like for example, what Seneca did in Toronto and expand the curricular to have, for example, open, sor open office work, uh, so source core skill professors. So for example, I, and I will, I'm, I'll be happy to take questions after your presentation, but let me tell you when Seneca came through, uh, first the teachers joined the project and the teachers did the whole building, packaging, and explore the source code uh, without help. And then they prepared the material for the next semester. For the next semester, the students start showing up on their IRC and start tackling on the individual efforts. Um, so the, the, this be, be, became a very successful story. We already been working with Seneca for two semesters. Um, right now, uh, we should be delivering the second, the second semester results. And we're also working with um, other organizations like, for example, the Sugar Labs uh, from the EXO machine or the OLPC machine and we're providing a project called Open Office or for Kids that also I'll be talking a little bit more about later today. And that's it. So if you guys have any question, I'll be happy to answer. Just raise your hand. All right, thank you very much. Okay. And uh, then uh, we 